Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we are looking at Viridian Pigment PG18. I have eight different brands that we're going to look at today. Viridian is very light fast, transparent, moderately staining, moderately dark valued, moderately dull blue-green pigment. It's offered by six different pigment manufacturers and the ASTM rates its light fastness and watercolor as excellent, and all manufacturers and independent tests agree. So obviously the first one is Winsor & Newton that we're looking at. It undergoes a small drying shift, lightening slightly and losing saturation. In most brands, it has a slightly gritty and gummy texture, which is useful for glazing and being lifted. It makes light tints and mixes very natural looking greens and moderately intense yellows such as nickel azo yellow. So that is a great yellow to mix with it. Um, the tinting strength is moderate to low so you want this in a low tinting strength palette. So I would personally mix it with like um, ultramarine violet, um, potter's pink, Azo yellow, colors like that that aren't overbearing, not phthalos. Um, the best mixing complement, so if you want to neutralize this and make it dark, you want to use PR254, so Parole Red, or PR206, which is like a Quinn Maroon, or a Paraline Maroon, like a PR179. So those are all great colors to use. So now I am at Daniel Smith, and I did Holbein before this. Um, I was surprised that Daniel Smith wasn't more granulating, just because they're Daniel Smith. I Like I said, Winter Newton is really the one that surprised me. Obviously, it is granulating, but just not as much. Um, and now we're looking at M. Graham. I really do like M. Graham because where it normally is kind of um, gloopy coming out of the tube or overly wet in Viridian, because Viridian is usually much harder, it comes out in a long like snake pattern reminiscent of Holbein and it stays that way. So it's great to use in the palette. Whereas, obviously, other ones might get wet and melt. I find that Viridian works really well with M. Graham. All the ones we've looked at so far, up until Core, were both transparent and non-staining. Core is semi-transparent and semi-staining, but it also is very, very dark. Um, it's really concentrated. But when we do the mass tone later, um, what I noticed was it is slightly less concentrated than Winsor & Newton. But they they kind of tie head to head to there. Um, and now we're looking at Schmincke. This one I had to go back to the tube for to get more when I did the glazing because there was so much binder. Da Vinci went down nicely. Um, it's not as granulating as the others, but I was still happy with it. And um, when we get to Rembrandt next, that's the one I was the least happy with. And the reason I was the least happy with Rembrandt is just because of the binder. Um, it is extremely hard to work with. It was like painting with binder. And when I was glazing it, um, it just kept getting lighter because it was just picking up binder and it was truly a mess. It's the only color here I would say not to get. Um, and I really wasn't happy with Schmincke either. It also had light binder issues. So I'll still use Schmincke, but it's definitely not like in my top five. So you can see I'm still working on Rembrandt. It just, um, I had to go back when the camera was off and lift some of that color on the top because it was just so full of binder it would have never dried. So
So another benefit of Viridian is it's really consistent across all manufacturers. So even though there are six manufacturers, it's pretty much the same. And when you watch me zoom out, you'll see all of these colors are really so, so close. The only variation is um, really binder and granulation. And I'm sorry, the film cut out on Winsor & Newton and Holbein, the first two that I glazed. So now we're watching Daniel Smith. And I had no issues glazing any of the ones on top. M. Graham. Which is probably one of my favorites. The only reason I would like Winter & Newton over M. Graham is because of that strong, strong granulation. But currently, M. Graham is what I have in my main palette. Now we're looking at Core. Glazed beautifully. Nice, strong, deep color. It might even be my third pick. Um, and Schminka, like I mentioned, I had to go back to the tube. It just, it had a little bit too much of a binder issue. Which surprised me because of all the super granulating colors. But people have mentioned on some of them a little bit of shine and mass tone. Okay, and now we're looking at Da Vinci, which was a great color. It's less granulating than the others, but otherwise it's a color that holds its own, probably almost equally as strong as the others. A little bit lighter. And then Rembrandt, which I'll get to in just a second here. And this was just very, very difficult. It's just stuck to my brush. Just, I don't know, maybe painting with some water and gum arabic would have been a little bit easier. This is only my second experience with Rembrandt, and I'm kind of disappointed with them. But I ordered a bunch of paints to try the brand out, so we'll see. And taking the tape off. My very favorite part. Okay, so now that you can kind of see all of them together, you see that they're very, very similar in color. There's Winter and Newton with that granulation at the bottom. Holbein. Daniel Smith. M. Graham, which has decent M granulation for M. Graham. Core, which is nice and rich and dark. Schminka, which would be great if it wasn't for a little bit too much binder. Da Vinci, which is a little lighter, but good. And Rembrandt. 